Power Fantasy has finally had its global launch, and with it has come a lot of new systems, experiences, and gotcha pulls. I wanted to share with you some of my favorite tips for new players to help you get the most out of playing. There are a lot of systems that open up slowly in Tower Fantasy, such as PvP, the Awakening System, crews, even your vehicles. So if you don't have access to what you want right away, it's probably because it's locked behind your level. Speaking of crews, they're this game's version of guilds, so if you're into guilds, it's worth joining one as there is a crew store that you'll gain access to, as well as rewards for completing various activities. Make sure that you're joining a crew that fits your playstyle as various crews will have different types of requirements and activity levels, just like any other guild in any other game. Don't ignore your matrix for your various weapons, they'll actually help to increase your CS, which is combat score, and provide a boost to your weapons overall. It's worth noting though that if you intend on putting a lot of time into the game, you'll eventually get the SR and SSR matrix by just grinding out the game. So it might be worth it to not overly level the blue or green matrix and save your resources for the good ones. Let's quickly talk about your CS. It's basically your combat score or gear score or character score, however you want to look at it. And it can be increased by equipping equipment, weapons, as well as matrix on those weapons. And then by leveling them, you'll help to increase your overall CS. CS is important as it's one of the contributing factors to knowing if you're ready to do various activities in the game, such as higher level joint operations. World bosses can give relic shards, SR weapons, and SSR weapons. You can hop in-game and fight one whenever you want, but it's highly suggested to do it when there's either a group fighting them or going in with a group or preferably both. They're actually really fun to do and I highly suggest trying out one at least once. Also, when you're looking on your map and you find one of the bosses, you can click on it and see what their loot table will be so you can kind of plan which bosses you want to do when. There are various gotcha pulls out in the world for the gold and black nucleuses, so exploring every nook and cranny you can as the gold nucleus pulls are generally the hidden away ones is definitely recommended. There are free outfits in game. Most of them are grindable through exploring each of the different zones, so if you're like me and believe fashion is, well, not just end game, but all of the game, it's totally worth to grind out each of the zones to get your outfits. This goes without saying, but collect everything. There's random achievements for collecting various items, like there's a series of them for picking all of the lettuce, and you just never know when you're gonna need them as there sometimes are dailies for your crew or for bounties that can ask for just random items. Don't forget to do your four daily bounties once you unlock them. You can usually get two to three black nucleus pulls and one gold nucleus pull a day from doing them. Mia will cook for you up to three times a day, which will give you different buffs, so make sure you visit her in the recommended tab of the adventure section to get something yummy. Kerosene flowers can actually be activated by using fire weapons instead of tossing a fire elemental at it to help you speed up the time grinding out the different zones and getting those black nucleus pulls. Save your joint supply chips that you get from doing the weeklies until you hit difficulty 6 or 7 at least in the joint operations section. That's the point where you start to get gold gear and it's worth it to have a stockpile of those chips before you get there. However, if you really need purple gear, it's worth noting that the supply chips don't actually start working until you hit difficulty 4 as that's when the purple gear starts dropping. This game is big and has a lot of different activities and side quests to do, so it's worth it to take your time if you don't want to miss anything. You can pet the various cats and dogs in the world, so you know, maybe don't skip that. The jetpacks and jetboards will skip an active cooldown if you activate them while you're either in the air or on the water respectively. Don't skip on relics, they can provide a lot of help in combat, but also will help you solve various world puzzles, so if you can't unlock something within a particular area, try equipping some of the relics that you've gotten to see if those will help you solve the puzzle. Speaking of relics, your relics can be slotted into three different loadouts, and then you can cycle through them using G on your keyboard if you're playing on PC, or whatever you might have bound that key to, or on mobile, there'll be a little arrow to the left of your equipped uh, relics in order to cycle through them. It'll make having a set of exploration and then a set of combat-based relics convenient and easy to use. 
Don't open up your shard boxes or material boxes that you'll get as rewards until you're 100% sure you know what to get with them, especially the material boxes as different weapons need different materials. And when leveling your weapons, the game will tell you how many boxes you have of each type and you can open them from that interface to make things easier. When going into the menus or the map, the game doesn't pause as this is an open world MMO style game. So make sure when you go through your inventory, do your gacha pulls, upgrade your weapons, etc., you're doing them in a safe spot. Fire is one of the handiest elements to have when exploring and even when you're in the different ruins as there are various puzzles and traps that need fire in order to open them. So having a fire weapon on you is definitely recommended in the early game at least. You'll see two little diamonds stacked on each other on your minimap. That means that there's some kind of either gold or dark nucleus pole near you. It can be a plant, behind a tar trap, floating in the air, or anything like that. So it's a good idea to pay attention to your minimap as often as possible when exploring to make sure you're not missing anything. You'll eventually come across Claire's dreams when opening chests. I've had it happen with regular respawnable chests as well as pods. It's a short little mini activity that you can do that will net you some really nice rewards. So if you have the time, it's 100% worth doing so you can get things like SSR relic pieces, free gacha pulls, and different equipment from it. You can collect resources like lettuce, grain, uh, conches, all that other stuff when riding around your vehicle. So you can still ride around stylishly while collecting resources without having to stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. You can get gifts for your simulacra that are in the awakening system from Claude and Banjus, the Crystal Dust Shop, the Point Shop, Hopkins in the Black Market, as well as the Claw Machine on Cetus Island. It's worth gifting them their favorite gifts if you use them a lot in order to unlock the traits that they have. The cybernetic arm relic is a must have in my opinion. If you're a free to play player, you can get them by opening up various SR relic shard boxes and combining 20 of them for the cybernetic arm. Or if you want, you can spend money in the cash shop in order to get the new player box that has it in it. Either way, it makes traversing the zones so much easier and definitely something to work towards. If your game is feeling a little stuttery or laggy, it could be because there are a lot of people on the same channel as you. It's worth it to try hopping over to a different channel to see if that fixes it. However, there is a cooldown after switching channels, so you can't hop them too often. In the cash shop, every day there is a claimable box that has some gold and a few other items inside, so make sure that you're claiming that when you log in so you don't miss out. You'll get a mushroom as a reward for a few different things such as leveling up your exploration percentage in a few areas, uh, completing story quest lines, etc. These actually will up your stamina. However, it's easy to forget to eat them as they literally just live at the bottom of your inventory, so make sure that you eat them ASAP so you can increase your stamina. And that about covers some of my favorite early game tips for Tower of Fantasy. Hopefully this will help you get the most out of your starting time in the game. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!